Hello and welcome. I'm going to try out the last of Harry's uh, training cases today. This one is on index, X match, and sequence. I'm also going to share a few tips at the end, uh, just in case tomorrow's first esports battle of the year is your first esports battle ever. Uh, I'll have a few thoughts on that. But first, let's dive into the case. So I'm going to download and pop over to my downloads folder, grab this, put it in my Harry functions folder, and Make a copy, and let's call that dim, and open it up. And I'm going to, oops, size it so it fits in the bit of my screen that you can see, hopefully. All right, the training case. for learning about these functions. Each of the levels give you a strong hint. You're given 60 minutes to enter your answers. Okay. Xmatch and indirect. The Xmatch function in Excel searches for a specific specified value in a range, <clears throat> supports both exact and approximate matches as well as reverse searches from first to last. In which row does the first Z appear in the data tab for the columns listed? Okay, so oh, look at that. We've got all kinds of emojis and fun. So uh, I'm going to do what I'm told and use Xmatch and indirect, although in real life I might not, but that's fine. Uh, so first we're going to say uh, indirect of, well actually, sorry, since I'm being instructive, let's, so how would we point to column D using indirect? Well, first, the easiest way to start is by pointing to column D at all. That's going to spill, obviously, because it's trying to spill a million rows. Uh, then we're going to wrap that in text, and then we're going to turn that into an indirect which will go back to spilling, but we don't need to worry about that right now. And then we just need to replace the Ds with cell references. So uh, I'm going to, sorry, what are we doing? So we're going to close the quote there, and then ampersand, and then cell reference here, which will point to D, and then ampersand, open quote for a colon in the middle, close quote, ampersand, and then another cell reference. The, the sort of ampersands and quotes and all that take a little bit of getting used to, but you'll get there. Okay, so now I want to know the first Z, so I'm just going to X match Z against that. Right, and by default, it searches first to last. So this is going to give me the first one. And just quickly check it matches the example, and it does. Hooray. Uh, so then we, whoops, take those answers, put them in the platform, and go on to level two. Index. Index function in Excel returns the value of a cell based on its position within a specified range. Uh, so, well, let's read the rest. By providing the row and column numbers, it retrieves the exact data from a table or array. It's often paired with Xmatch or other lookup functions for advanced data retrieval. So we're going to use the index formula with this range, A1 to T101, uh, and figure out what we're getting. So in other words, the second row and third column of this range, A1, I assume that's, yes, that's the whole thing, A1 to T101, the second row and third column should give us a G, and that matches the example. Good. So then let's do index. Uh, and I'm just going to give this a name for ease of reference. I'll call it data. So we'll say index, data, row number, column number. And confirm that matches. Hooray. Uh, you could type in uh, A1 colon T101, but if you do, make sure, oh, well, first make sure that you make it that on the data tab. So when it lit up all of this, that's because this range was now being selected. Uh, but second, make sure that you lock it so that it will copy down correctly. But I'm going to keep it as data. Okay. <laughs> Look, we've got secret messages here. Uncharacteristically, was there a secret message here? No. Just check. Just check. Okay, index and match. Use index and x match to determine what letter is at the intersection of the two emojis. Okay, so to figure out our row number, we're going to look for this emoji down here. And to figure out our column number, we're going to look for an emoji up here. So this is going to be index, data. We're going to x match this against this row, lock. And we're going to x match the column, h94, against column headers here. And that matches. Hooray. Index match problem. Ah, I, love it. I love cases like this. Uh, wait, is that, sorry, index match, no problem. Uh, I love cases where you can just visually see yes. Oh yes, and sorry, I even missed the second X. It's index X match, no problem. Um, anyway, 
Sequence index X match let concat. Oh, now we're moving on up. Okay. Arrows are very common in Excel battles. That is true. Uh, if you do not already have one, please keep a copy of this arrow table so you can quickly see the impact of an arrow. That is a good piece of advice. Uh, I do have one, but that's a good thing to have. For levels 4 to 7, you can create one formula or a what-if data table that can solve all the levels. For each level, find the intersection of the emojis and then move in the direction of the given arrow for the number of characters listed. Combine each letter you've moved through to form a Word or Excel function. Oh, I love this. This is amazing. The only difference between the levels are how many arrow directions are used. For level 4, only the down arrow is used. Okay, so uh, I am going to take the suggestion to use let here. We're just going to build this up bit by bit. Uh, if, you know, let's we'll start without let. Uh, so let's just start by doing uh, take take the headers across a few more times. So uh, I'm going to want a row number, a column number. Uh, then I'm going to want a row. Uh, I'm going to just use delta because that's my preferred way of doing that. And column delta. So. The row number is going to be x match this against, I probably should have just given this a name as well, but never mind. Actually, no, I'm going to give it a name now. I'm going to call it uh, rlab for row label. I'm going to call this clab for column label. Whoops, no, don't type in c. clab. Uh, so now we're going to x match this against rlab. Much nicer. We're going to x match this against clab. Then the row shift, we're going to X look up this in here, lock, returning from here, lock. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and name these as well. I'm going to name these R, R underscore R, and R underscore C. Just make all the formulas a little easier to read. So we're going to look up in R, returning from R underscore R. Uh, and then back to I, uh, this time returning from C. Okay, so now we're going to want to take sequence uh, of this many rows starting from here and in steps of this. Uh, we'll lock that for a second and then do the same thing there. And then we're going to index data this and this and that's going to pull back each of the letters of example. So now that we've done it little by little, let's think about how to put that all together into a let. Uh, now, if if you're less comfortable with this stuff, you might want to kind of take you, take each of your formulas from here and, and build them. I was really just doing that as a demonstration, so I'm happy to just go directly. So we're going to have rnum can be x match this against rlab. Uh, cnum can be x match uh, this against C lab. Uh, then we'll say R delt can be X lookup the arrow in R returning from R R R R R R R uh, and then we'll do the same thing for C delt looking up the same thing but returning from R C then we'll have R sec will be sequence uh, of these many rows, uh, no columns. Uh, start will be uh, R num, uh, and step will be R delt. And again, we're going to do the exact same thing for column. So C sec, C num, C delt. And then finally, well, not quite finally, so let's can be index <coughs> on data by R sec and csec. Uh, sorry, and then we need to return let's for a second, and then we're going to, so that spills out everything, and then what we actually want to return is concat of let's. And that works nicely. <clears throat> and sure enough, we get a bunch of Excel functions, even this one and this one, which you might not recognize as much as some of the others. <laughs> uh, okay. Loving this so far. Uh, and then I think everything else is now the same. Uh, so we've got down and right arrow used, but I think it's just all these levels, I think, will now have the same formula. Uh, radians. We're just gradually adding in more arrows, but if you build a general solution, then 
it solves all the levels. So now we can grab, where did I get to? I put in level four, so let's put in level five. Let's put in level six. Let's put in level seven. Uh, and then let's hope that I actually get it right this time because that would certainly make for a better demonstration. Where's the submit button? Possibly behind my timer. Yes, it is. Okay. Submit. Hooray! I actually got it right, which, <laughs> considering that I'm supposed to be showing you an educational resource, is really kind of the bare minimum. But anyway. Okay, so luckily that one went a little bit faster than the map one, which uh, gels nicely with my desire to spend a few minutes on some tips. So, if tomorrow is your first esports battle, uh, what are some things that you would consider doing? Number one, uh, if you look at the time, there's a 45 minute window uh, for the case to from when it comes out to when you have to be done. Uh, you have a half hour anytime in that window to do it. So you can, you know, from when they release the case, you might have up to 10 minutes before you need to start and you'll still have half an hour available. If you start any later than that, your time will get cut off. So just make sure, first thing is just make sure you know what time it is in your local time zone. Make sure you start in the valid time. But then the next thing is if you have the time, uh, click on the case link as soon as it comes out and before you hit start, there's, at least there always was last year, I assume there will be this year as well, there's a link to a, a like a two minute long YouTube video that will tell you about the case. Watch that video before you start your time, because then you can start to think. <clears throat> and then, depending on where you are, you can, like, maybe you say, okay, I'm going to take this time to think about a nice design. Uh, maybe you say, okay, this, I see that there's going to be arrows in here let me go and grab this arrow table that Harry handily created for me. Or I see that there's going to be, you know, um, like, you know, cell references as text that I'll need to move to. So let me just, you know, grab Harry's other case and refresh my memory on how indirect works or, or whatever. Um, if you see something that you think, oh, I don't remember exactly how to do that. Maybe you can grab one of Harry's cases. Maybe you can look at one of my videos or just Google. How do I get... How do I get the row number out of a string of a cell reference or something like that? Um, and just, you know, depending on how much, sometimes it doesn't tell you much about the case, sometimes it tells you a lot. Depending on how much it tells you, you might be able to think about how to design a model, you might be able to think about what are the questions I'm likely to be asked about this, that kind of thing. It can help you a lot. Um, once you get started, some basic exam technique. One, keep an eye on your time. Uh, so when I'm recording my videos, I have uh, this, it's partly because it kind of stays on top even if I click on something else and so I put it behind where my face is which helps me to remember not to do things behind my face where you can't see them uh, but it also just helps me to keep an eye on the time um, which is useful uh, because you have half an hour you want to make sure you're using it well um, one important thing if you get stuck like don't don't spiral if you find yourself doing something and thinking oh my god it's going to take me 45 minutes just to do this stop and think. Maybe there's a different way that you could approach it. Often the key to solving, especially the hard levels, is coming up with a good design, um, not just kind of plowing on through. Um, there, The levels, again, it varies from case to case, but the levels don't always depend on each other. So if you're stuck on one level, you can look ahead. Does the next level depend on this? Does it depend on the bit of this that I'm stuck on? If not, maybe I can go on and solve some of that. Can you solve something by hand and see if it matches your, your answer. That might help you to debug, that kind of thing. Also, even if uh, the levels are all dependent on one another, which again, usually at least the first few are independent, but after that they can they can start to be one big chain thing. The bonuses are often independent, and the bonuses will usually be labeled with what level does this depend on, if there is any level that it depends on. I realized I'm getting distracted by the timer, so I'm going to put that out of the way and also stop it. Um, but often there'll be at least a few bonuses that don't depend on anything. And the bonuses tend to be worth less points than clearing a whole level, but also less work than clearing a whole level. So like I would say, generally speaking, work through the levels as far as you can. But then if you find yourself stuck and thinking, okay, I've got five minutes left, I don't think that's long enough to solve the next level, then go and solve a bonus or two and you'll still make best use of your time. Um, it's... <laughs> It's worth asking yourself what you're doing this for, um, because the, you know there's with the exam technique. There's also the the thoughts about well, you can maximize your score if you you know make sure that you guess if you don't know the answers. Um, you know if it's 
if the answers are something like this, like small-ish uh, positive integers, then there's a decent chance that you'll get one right. If the answers are single letters, there's a decent chance you'll get one right if you guess. Uh, if they're Excel functions, you might not, but you can put in, you know, offset for every one of these and maybe you get lucky. The other thing is there, there can often be a default answer, like, you know, on what round it does the game end? If the game doesn't end after the full 90 rounds, then put in 91. Or if, you know, Lana doesn't ever reach a banana, then put in zero. If there's a default answer like that, there's a good chance there'll be at least a few levels where that comes up, so just plug that in. Uh, but... Keep in mind what you're doing this for. Like, if you're doing this because you want to win, uh, then, okay, do whatever you can to get points. If you're doing it because you want to learn, then just spend your last few minutes starting to solve the next bit. You don't have to stop when time is up. Um, so don't, don't worry about whether you maximize your score or not, because it really doesn't matter what score you get uh, if you're doing this to learn. So just, you know, you don't have to stop at the end. Just kind of carry on. Um, and I'd, I'd suggest two things. One is, if you've already started building something for a level and you didn't get to finish it, or if you've already started something that you thought would carry you through to a few more levels if you had time but you didn't, try to finish that, uh, even if it ends up taking you like twice as long as the whole time for the case. But afterwards, try coming back to it fresh and thinking, this method that involved me having to, I don't know, like copy and paste 25 times or, you know, edit formulas manually a bunch of times, was there a more elegant way I could have done that? And then try building it that way. Um, and then, you know, if you're still stuck there, then come Monday, there will be a whole bunch of solution videos uh, from myself and from various other uh, various other people who do them now. Um, I, I say come Monday, we used to just kind of put them out as soon as we were ready, but uh, the a sort of cousin of the case from the MEWC round is going to be used for the MECC battle this weekend. Uh, and so they've asked us not to put out solutions until after that. So you'll see a whole rash of solutions on Monday, but it also means you'll have a little bit more time to think about it by yourself. Um, and then that's kind of all the most basic things. If you want to go beyond that, someone asked me for tips on how to improve at esports when I met them in Vegas. And my honest answer was, I don't have a lot of advice that is not contradicted by other advice. So, for example, uh, you know, this this case and Harry's cases in general often has very simple, clear, succinct instructions. But sometimes the cases are inherently complex and they have piles of instructions. Um, if you don't read all the instructions carefully, that may come back to bite you and you may miss a nuance and get all your answers wrong. On the other hand, if you do read all the instructions, that might take a third of your time and mean that you don't have time to build things out. Um, so sometimes you're better off to do it one way, sometimes you're better off to do it another way. I, I often kind of skim the instructions or, you know, just skip them entirely if I feel like I've picked it up from the video, try to figure out, okay, is what I'm doing matching the example uh, and just go from there. It, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, look ahead, but also don't. Uh, because, you know, sometimes if you're working on, like say here, for example, uh, I mean, for this one, it tells you the only difference between the remaining levels is how many arrows to use, but it's not always as clear as that. So sometimes it's worth looking ahead to say, okay, well, I'm building level four, and that only has down arrows, but actually if I build it in a way that you know, uses the lookup table and handles general arrows, then I'll be able to solve the next four levels. In that case, as long as you don't, you know, slow yourself down on level four too much so that you get nothing done, it's probably worth looking ahead. But other times looking ahead will be too much of a distraction. Uh, you know, if you've only got just enough time to finish level four and you start looking ahead to like, well, what could I do to prepare for level five and prepare for level six? You'll just end up doing badly because of it. So again, look ahead, but also don't. Um, build a general solution, but also don't. Uh, I've got, like I said, it's all, it's all contradictory after that. At some point, you'll just have to find your own strategy. But the basics stay the same. Watch the video, know what you're dealing with, you know, plan as much as you can in advance. If you see something that you don't know how to do, uh, you know, that's like in the in that time before the case starts is a good time to Google it. Or like I said, look at, look at one of Harry's cases. They're great resources on the kind of most common basics, uh, or you can find one of my videos on doing it or that kind of thing. Um, and then once you're going, keep an eye on your time. Think about whether you have time to jump into the next thing, whether you want to go off and do a bonus. Maybe there's an easier level that's independent later, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, good luck, and uh, I'll see you next time.